I remember we were getting ready to go on a state visit to Germany mm -hmm. and um, uh, my CS Balala called me in and was like, actually what we're going to do is we're going to send you back to KICC. They're waiting for you. Take this letter and off you go. I opened the door and the chair was sitting there with the board yeah. and everything. And I'm like, hi, you know, I've been sent. And he, he was like, shh, we're waiting for somebody. I came knocking on the door again and I was like, hi. I said, get back. I was like, hi, I've got, I've just been asked to deliver something to you. Yeah. So chair takes the envelope, opens it, reads it, looks at me, reads it, and is like, oh, bored. This is our new acting CEO. This young person, what the hell could she possibly even know about tourism? Are they mad? Here I was, you know, president's niece. Everything was not in my favor. That is when I got to face Twitter for the first time. Mm -hmm. K-O-T. Classmates, Mkofiti, welcome to another episode, another lecture. And I am so excited about uh, today's episode. Uh, one, mainly because it's going to be hyper. Uh, our lecturer for the day, our guest for the day. I have absolutely admired her from, from a distance for a minute, and that's because of how bubbly and how excited she's about life. And I'm hoping that energy will transmit to me today. Uh, we're still filming at Long Honored Place. Come check out the apartments. Wambe Wakupati discount here, field director. Our lecturer for the day. For me, I am a member of Team 5 Minutes, and I was I was a religious member of Team 5 Minutes, so I'm trying to figure out when that is coming back. <laughs> Our lecturer for the day is none other than Nana Gishaga. How are you? Very well, thank you. Oh, wow. Pleasure to be here. Thank in you. In the classroom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you are our lecturer. Have you ever had any stint lecturing? I haven't. Um, haven't. Probably the closest I've had is, um, you know, just standing at the front of the class. Right. Um, reading my homework or something like that, which right. is not really much, but this side of it, no. <laughs> right. You know, usually I will sometimes introduce our guests, but oh my goodness, I went through what you've been able to do and achieve. I was like, I, there's no way I'm getting all that in my head. <laughs> I will let you do the honors of just letting us know who you are. But let me start from here. Uh, we, we, we have over 100,000 subscribers on our channel. And for us, this is a class. And I'm just wondering from this conversation, at the end, for someone who's tuning in to watch this particular conversation, what do you want them to learn? Gosh, I think um, what I'd like them to learn is every every class or every lesson, you should be getting a lesson from that, right? And that's right. what this whole series is about. Yeah. So I think for me, it's, um, I always say, if you can teach yourself something new every day, so hopefully something from my life, mm -hmm. um, you've been able to, uh, at, like I said, shed off who the persona is of Nana, you know? Yeah. Like I said, there's a lot of titles. It's either somebody's grandfather, somebody's niece, somebody's mm -hmm. sister, somebody's daughter. Right. Um, but just who Nana is, you know? Um, and I hope that they can come away feeling, gosh, you know, she's gone through so much. Mm -hmm. um, if she can do it, I can do it. So I'd like people to come away feeling inspired, right. motivated, um, definitely challenged. Right. And I like to say I'm an underdog. So to find that voice, you know, you've got to have that voice. And if you don't have that voice, then um, you can't really go far. And I know some people feel trapped or feel so standing up for yourself, empowering. So it's not women empowerment so much. It's self-empowering. Okay. So I'd say self-empowering, okay. inspired, okay. motivated. Absolutely. Um, and just a little bit of a chuckle, just a okay. laugh. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> so let's get to find out and learn more about Nana. Let's start yes. right from the beginning. Um, what do you remember about your childhood? How did you grow up and how did it impact and shape the person that we see here today? Yeah. So, gosh, um, <laughs> early childhood. Um, I was born in Kenya, okay. in Nairobi, Nairobi Hospital. All right. Um, and uh, March 17th, 1978. So 46 years ago, just. Um, it was your birthday three days ago yes, when, when yes, we're filming this. Yes, oh, wow. yes, yes. Yeah, Happy yeah. belated birthday. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So they say each year you you celebrate. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So early childhood. I mean, it wasn't, I don't think it was any different. Maybe to the outside, it seemed like that. Hmm. Um, you know, I did, I, my parents got divorced at a very young age. I can't quite 
rem- say I remember mm-hmm. um, living in a in a family where it's a pet where parents are there, right. a mother and a father. Mm-hmm. Um, so at age three, my parents got divorced. Right. So um, they always say it does shape you. It, it shapes one person. Um, yeah. I don't know if it does or if it doesn't. But um, so grew up in Kenya. Um, then after that, at age seven, so schooling here, yeah. age seven, went off to boarding school in the UK. Okay. So very young age. Yeah. Um, that's so and a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, yeah. did your parents not love you? Like what happened? And it's like, no, actually, um, still really great schools, obviously in Kenya. Yeah. But um, I have to just say I'm fortunate enough mm-hmm. to um, be able to have uh, oh, gone away right. to school there. Um, I am dyslexic. It's something I don't shy away from, so I suffer from dyslexia. Okay. Um, it can be a, it's a reading disorder, it's a behavioral disorder. Um, we've got different types of dyslexia. Okay. Mine is um, attention deficit disorder, so right. I follow lint in the mm. classroom. I'm one of those people who, right. so that kind of thing. But, um, and I was being able to taught the skills, mm-hmm. being taught the skills um, in the UK. So right. went off to boarding school in the UK, mm-hmm. um, had an amazing time. Right. It was a bit of a shock at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, you're just there. Mm-hmm. You know, they take you away from your parents. Your parents are in the hall. They're saying, come and watch TV. You come back. Mm-hmm. The hall is being emptied. Um, but two months later, when it's time to go home, you're crying because you don't want to leave the friends that you've made. Yeah. You know, so yeah. um, some of the people that I met then, I'm still very, very close to now. Oh, wow. So wow. Um, with that, for high school, I then... Um, moved across the pond, so to mm-hmm, speak, mm-hmm. to uh, Boston, Massachusetts. So okay. that's where I was in high school there. Right. Again, boarding. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was a prep school. It was um, a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I have to say probably was in even junior, junior high when I was still in, this, in the UK, right. when I started really taking a shine to athletics. Okay. So um, even then in England, I was never allowed on sports day. I was never allowed to run against the girls because it was unfair. Um, yeah, parents had had come all this way to <laughs> to see their kids run. So they ran. I ran against the boys, and I still won. Mm. So there we go. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. You know, you know, I know talking to people from uh, from out there, they always, yes. they know Kenyans as you know runners. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. oh my goodness, that was yes. a used against you. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's because of the ability. So I mean, yeah. I was rubbish at long distance. I mean, anything after 500 meters, I'd be like. You know, 1,500 meters, that'd be a mess, but right. sprinting. Right. Um, so then I went off to high school in the, in Massachusetts, mm. New England. Okay. So broke a lot of records there in New England. Wow. Um, and like I said, I was a jock. Mm. I'd wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. I would train. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm that person who have like the eggs, the boiled eggs, you know, protein, all of that stuff. Right. Um, cold baths right. for training, the physio. Right. Um, so I'd train three, three or four times a day. Um in between school yeah, yeah, for sure. and classes. So that went on. Um, somewhere along the line, um, I fell in love. I fell in love with alcohol. So yes, I know you're smiling and you're like, oh, I no, <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah. no, it was, it was the love of alcohol. So okay. um, I am a uh, recovering alcoholic right. since 1999. Um, I talk about it. I speak about it. I don't, um, it's a scar. Yeah. You know, everything that we've done positive or negative is who's made us who we are today. Right. So um, that's that's just one of them. So okay. again, did that. So mm-hmm. as you do when you indulge, I'm me, I'm all or nothing, right? So yeah. um, obviously I was <laughs> I was a mess. Right. Um, so uh, then age 21, when everybody's getting into the game, I'm getting out. So I, I stopped drinking at age 21. Okay. So, um, That's yeah. Lot, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's many, many years, many right. decades now. Right. Um, so took a bit of a break from school. Mm-hmm. Went to rehab again in Baltimore, mm-hmm. Maryland. Um, a rehab called Father Martin's, okay. um, which was which was great. I mean, mm-hmm. I I had been in and out of you know meetings. Um, really, you name it, had right. happened. So um, it was really time to to just kind of you mm-hmm. know get back get back on track. Right. So after that, um, went then came back to the UK mm-hmm. for university. Okay. Um, first degree was uh, business, uh, advertising and marketing. Okay. Um, I love marketing. I love I love advertisement. I love it. Um, when everyone's watching the Super Bowl, yeah. I don't watch it for um, the sport. Right. I watch it because of the ads that come in between. So <laughs> even every time we were, when I was in the States, yeah. I could I could watch it with the guys because they'd be watching that. But then I would just wait for the 
for uh, the ads okay. to come because of right. course you have the best ads yeah. um and again even watching tv even to this day i'll just be like you know that was a rubbish ad or that was really good or mm-hmm. wow you know i probably it right. spoke to me or right. so i'm that's me um i i love I, i love expression but again through how one markets themselves and of mm-hmm. course Um, moving on, you know, I even did my thesis mm-hmm. in uh, the UK right. um, on celebrity endorsement, which is obviously a form of advertising wow. and marketing. Um, took to it so much where I then started my first company, um, which was Bora Bora. And that was a, a luxury concierge service. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's literally um, marketing to celebrities and okay. getting celebrity endorsement. So um, there I was, you know, what was I marketing? I was marketing Kenya. Mm-hmm. Um, and was able to attend because uh, they have the Golden Globes, the right. Oscars. Yeah. Um, gosh, that was probably like what, maybe 30, 30 years ago. Um, so still in university. Mm-hmm. Um, my father would always be like, look, you know, you've got to learn. And he's always been like that, you know, the yeah. value of money. Right. So he would never be like, oh, if we ever wanted money, he would never just give it to us. Yeah. He'd be like, have a list. Okay. Toothpaste is this much. Yeah. So this is, and then you calculate it, and this is what I'm going to give you. I'm not going to just hand you money. So, um, yeah, <laughs> so that was really, that yeah. was really good. You know, it's a, it's a good lesson. Um, did we like it? No, we didn't. But yeah, again, sure. <laughs> he just was like, you know, and again, even if the places where we had him, we'd be like, oh, but you know, so-and-so mm-hmm. at, at, at high school got a car for their birthday. And he's like, and? Mm-hmm. So? So what? You know where you've come from? Yeah. I don't have to get you a car. He's like, that car's probably been loaned. It's probably on a loan. It's probably on a whatever. He's like, why are you getting a car? You don't even live in the US, you know? Yeah. Um, focus why you went there. You went there for school. So he's always he's always taught us, you know, um, to be extremely humble right. um, and also be just value for money. Right. So um, there I was, so working um, and also at uni mm-hmm. and was able to attend. So, so what happened is that they have these gifting suites Right. So where celebrities come through mm-hmm. um, around the back of all of these major events. Mm-hmm. And so they'll have like a jewelry company, everything that's cutting edge that's not yet mm-hmm. made it. Right. And it's just cutting on the trend. So mm-hmm. obviously the celebrities take it. Celebrities love free stuff. Um, <laughs> and there's always one spot for a country to feature. Right. So I did my pitch um, mm-hmm. and uh, I got it because, of course, they're already just doing visit Jamaica, mm-hmm. visit Fiji, visit right. whatever. And... None of these people were ever exposed to Africa, let alone Kenya. Yeah. You know, in Kenya, we have the most amazing beaches right. and um, the most amazing Safari product. Right. So 30 years ago was when actually my life um, changed, was when actually my life, my love for tourism and my love for Kenya started. Wow. You know, the country, that is, yeah, um, sure. you know, and um, there I was um, sitting there, speaking to people, gifting them. So I remember here, I was like going around Mm-hmm. looking for products mm-hmm. so obviously i needed hotels yeah so um i remember looking for sponsors and i remember saying you know um i laugh about it now but um the person's you know still still is there and each time i'm sure they see me and they kick <laughs> themselves you know it's like that dragon den moment when you wish you had invested in that person and you didn't yeah. you know yeah. so i remember going to one uh mobile company mm-hmm. um, it's not the largest right now so yeah. don't worry it's 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 there <laughs> it's there it's there yeah. uh, somewhere but it's still big yeah. maybe the second um uh and i remember going to the the market head of marketing and i was like i'm going to be at the hilton mm-hmm. i'm going to be marketing kenya mm-hmm. i'm going to be at the golden globes mm-hmm. um and we just need you know I'm, i'm going with a whole gifting suite you know i've got right. some properties i've got you know um all of that stuff and they were like ah oh, You know, why Why would we go to the Hilton downtown in Nairobi? Why are you going to be in a ballroom there? And I said, this is the Hilton Beverly Hills. And they laughed. They were like, you were trying to tell me that you're going to be actually attending the Golden Globes. Yeah. Laughed it off and just threw me out of their office. So there we go. <laughs> Kept on moving on. Yeah. And um, uh, again, went to Heritage Hotels. Mm-hmm. Um, even though they are family, I mm-hmm. still had to pitch. It was not like you're going to be... It was actually even harder. Yeah. So... Um, And had to even just pitch to the marketing department, not even right. go to the the, the directors. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I just was like, this is what I want to do. This is a new form of marketing. Right. Celebrity endorsement. Mm-hmm. It's great. Um, 
gave them a whole business proposal, PowerPoint speaking, you know, mm-hmm. all of that stuff. And mm-hmm. they were like, okay, so we'll give you some packages for Voyager. We'll mm-hmm. give you some packages for Mara, mm-hmm. Explorer, and, you know, uh, Samburu and Trepids. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's see what you can do. Yeah. Um, and then after that, the only other place that was missing was obviously Diani mm-hmm. side. So, um, again, I had a friend, um, you know, Bob, Bobby, yeah. and um, his family owned Diani Reef. Mm. And again, it was not just a free ride. It was kind of like pitching to the family, yeah. pitching to the market. They were like not even to them, mm-hmm. um, which is fair. You yeah. know, you have to always pitch. You can't just be given stuff. Sure. Um, and they liked it. They, they bought into the proposal. Right. So off I went to Hollywood, mm-hmm. um, to Beverly Hills. Right. Um, you know, and even at that point in time, because again, it was literally on my on my budget. I got some mon- monetary sponsorship. I'd saved money from working as a waitress during my um, time at university in, in school. Right. Um, and there I was. So I, you know, we were going to be at the Beverly Hills mm-hmm. Hilton. Like I said, that's where the event was. And we had the yeah. suites there. Um, I got to meet this lady, Natalie Dubois, who's now been my friend for, for years. Nice. Um, and there I was, checked in to, you know, your holiday in, it wasn't anything lavish. I just was like, you know, let's just, it's company now. It's mm-hmm. let's live on a budget. It's business, you know? Yeah. And that's one lesson, you know, yeah. even if you can afford to, I could have gone and checked into the Beverly Hills. Yeah. Right. But there it's like $800 a night. You know, what are you doing? You've just, you've just, just started off. Years yeah. Woo. You know, so <laughs> yeah. exactly. And it's just kind of like, well, you can do it, but um, I just wanted to save the money. Mm-hmm. So you, you've got to budget. I have to really say budget, right. you know, and as much as and and live within your means, mm. you know. Um, I, I didn't feel bad thinking that, oh, my God, I'm going to be in a holiday in round the corner, even if it is in Beverly Hills while everybody else is there. Right. Because at the end of the day, I knew what I came to do. Yeah. I had companies I was representing. I was representing the country, Kenya. Right. Um, and I was there to do something. So got in was given a very good space because um, the country has their own room yeah. in the hotel. Right. So it's like a suite. So um, I remember setting up. I even had taken some jars of sand from Diani. So I, <laughs> I, I put my kikois on the table wow. and did so for the kikois. Kikois yeah. I did as a beach theme. Mm-hmm. So put some sand on there, put some of the shells, had some of the banners that I'd gone with, mm-hmm. the properties um, and everything. And then on the other side, I had the kangas all done up. Um, it was a room. About the, si- about the size of this here. So one yeah. half was beach, one half was safari. Oh, wow. um, and there I was. And, you know, door opens. And first person is Jennifer Hudson. And you're like, damn. Oof. You know, I'm like, you know, okay, this okay. is real. Let's go. And um, it was, the day went by so quickly. But the amount of people that just stopped and wanted to listen about Kenya, I mean, it was, there was Jennifer Hudson, there was Spike Lee, I mean, you being in the film industry. Yeah, so yeah. even the with that there, yeah. you know, we yeah. had um, Jamie Foxx, we had Terrence Howard, we had um, Jennifer Love Hewitt, um, oh, a lot goodness. of the uh, managers coming through, yeah. Sharon Stone, you know, um, and, and it was just, it just started off, it just there we go, boom. People mm-hmm. knew, you know, I was being called Mama Kenya. Yeah. And there was just that bit of pride, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I got to be able to represent my country, right. you know, and it was and it was me. It was my initiative based on my thesis. Right. Putting, typing all of those thousands of, you know, words. Yeah. Um, it, it kind of worked out. You know, yeah. you're thinking celebrity endorsement is <laughs> the thing. Mm-hmm. Everybody got a trip to come to Kenya. Um, some people took it. So how it works is that the first part is they come through the gifting suite. Okay. So... If you don't, uh, even as soon as they're coming in, you're marketing the country, whether mm-hmm. or not they take the job, or whether or not they take the, the trip or not, they get to know about Kenya. Yeah. So, um, yeah, after that, I remember it was, it was two days, three days, it was a weekend of just hecticness, hecticness. Yeah. <laughs> and um, after that, just, you know, finished and was like, wow, I did it. You know, it didn't really hit me until... I'm heading home and I'm just on the plane and thinking, wow, Nani, I don't think you realize how big, yeah, how huge. big that was, you know? Yeah, and huge. then after Golden Globes, then after that, um, Natalie called me and was like, you were such a hit, you mm-hmm. know? When people heard that Kenya was being represented there, um, they were like, can we, get some, can we get some trips? And she was like, well, actually what we're going to do is she'll come back for the Cannes Film Festival. Um, wow. So again, got to go for that. That's in the summer. Um, and doing the same thing. And that's how my... Borrow, borrow started, you know. Yeah. Um, from there, 
I then also, um, you know, a lovely friend, her name's Mickey. Mm -hmm. um, you know, her and another good friend of mine, Brixton, they were, um, so I started doing different events. So right. there was Desmond Tutu's birthday. Um, I, I don't know if at that point in time it was the 70th or maybe 60th. And word had gotten around that, you know, for, for charity, for, for fundraising. Yeah. So again, they were like, we hear that you would be able to, you know, can we get a, a, a trip? To Kenya, so I'd package trips, and they would auction it, right. so for for a lot of money. So um, again, so Brixton and and Mickey, they they were the ones who um, who, who bought the trip, who right. won the auction on it, bid on it. Let's that's right. the word bidding, and came to Kenya. So again, on that is when you come to Kenya, I'm then your host. You know, yeah. so I communicate with you, I plan your trip, and mm -hmm. I just say, okay, look, if you want me to be around, we can maybe have dinner. If you want me to be fully with you, mm -hmm. I can accompany you or accompany you for some of it. Mm -hmm. um, so some of their trip, um, I joined them then for the Diani part right. um, and really got to know them. They're both, to this day, my friends. I mean, they wow. both are huge in their own space yeah. um, in, 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 in the States. Yeah. And um, just my soundboard. And from there, it just started getting more and more. I then, you know, one time got a call and it was like, hi, I'm Michael Jackson's, you know, PA. And I'm like, okay, what is this about? What is it you, you want? They're like, he's having a birthday. Can you please package a, a trip for wow. auction? Um, and then Sultan of Brunei is another birthday party I did. Um, Born Free again. And that's where I met a lovely friend who's, you know, um, my, my younger son's godmother, Loretta, and her husband, Nad. And it was the Born Free Foundation, which has ties with Land Rover. Yeah. Um, and obviously with Kenya, mm -hmm. the Born Free Foundation, right. um, which is based here in Kenya. and But it was in um, London where they mm -hmm. were doing the auction, and the Born Free Gala event. Mm -hmm. And they came out um, and got to also see them and, and uh, got to hang out with them and friendships flourished from there. So things just morphed in and, and out. And before I knew it, I'm being called by MTV. And they're like, we want to do the MTV Awards uh, Mamas, the Africa yeah. Awards. Yeah. Um, we hear that you're the go-to person. Right. Um, what, what can you do? And I was like, right. well, what do you want me to do? I can right. do anything, you know? Right. It's um, right. So again, that's how I, I got involved with the, well, actually bidding and bringing the Mamas here Oof. to um, the that time when we had. That happened again. What? Okay, yeah. we'll get there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. there we go. So I mean, I'm just giving you a little bit about yeah. my yeah. my historical, I mean, we've gone from early childhood to, to work no, now. I, I love it. And, um, and there it was. So I started doing the Mamas and that's when again, Akon now came and Wyclef and yeah. um, Debange and yeah. again, Tribe Hotel were just opening. So again, went to them and I was like, look, you know, um, would you want to partner? And they were like, yeah, great. Why not? You know, mm -hmm. um, all the artists stayed there. And it was literally a week of sheer, I wouldn't say mayhem. It was just, Cutting. <laughs> yeah, but even just awe because you yeah. had a lot, who's who, you know, we had Two-Face, mm -hmm. Debaj, uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. from Nigeria. I mean, you had, like we said, um, all these people just at yeah. the tribe. Yeah. You know, Wyclef had turned his suite into a sound studio. recordio studio. Oh. So after he was practicing on the stage in Kasarani, mm -hmm. he'd come back, throw off a few things. You know, Akon's like, man, you know, I want to want to buy some property. What can I do? So started like helping them out and and doing all of that. Um, and it was just great. But the most important thing was that um, everything I do in tourism or promoting Kenya, mm -hmm. the country's got to succeed. Yeah. It, it's got to be, it takes the front part, right. you know? And I think that was probably one of the biggest stages Kenya had ever been on. I mean, entertainment yeah. value was great, yeah. but um, so, being able to put your name out there was was um, was huge, yeah, sure. you know? Um, and then from there, that's when, so we're now moving about 14, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. um, government came calling. Yeah. So people don't actually think, they think that my, Last gig was actually my first gig with government with it, it, with KICC because yeah. that was not um, mm -hmm. that was actually my last gig in government. Mm -hmm. um, I'd actually I've served three presidents. My first president was Kibaki, um, as, as you know, advisor helping out in mm -hmm. in, in tourism sector, um, but in always anchored at the tourism ministry, and that's mm -hmm. what it was always you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that, when President Kenyatta came in, right. um, I then moved to I then now came to Ministry of Tourism. Right. Um, so again, but I came in through KICC. So mm -hmm. I came in as head of marketing to mm -hmm. KICC, but seconded to the Ministry of Tourism with yeah. Phyllis Candier. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And uh, again, worked on many things, like I said, marketing the country. Right. So we're kind of sitting there thinking, how can we do that? And if you, you know, obviously that um, the brand make it Kenya. Yeah. Right. That's me. 
That's you. That's me and uh, my my friend Loretta. I mean, it's an agency from from outside and all of that. But we had an agency from outside. Mm -hmm. We had to think of something that could, you know, the whole point of that Make It Kenya mm -hmm. is think agriculture, make it Kenya. Right. Think tourism, make, make it, it Kenya. Kenya. Think health, make it Kenya. Mm -hmm. Think sport, make, make it, it Kenya. Kenya. Um, Has it taken off? Not to its full potential, but um, mm -hmm. you know, it's 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 there. It's there. But um, you know, extremely proud about that because that's something that was a huge global campaign. Right. You know. Um, but then again, I guess being at the time or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And if something's not anchored mm -hmm. correctly somewhere, you can see it can kind of get sure. washed out sure. as as it did happen. You know, it's it's now brand Kenya. Mm -hmm. Make a Kenya morphed into the parasitical brand, brand Kenya. You yeah. know, um, and the whole thing was just to have a whole one page mm -hmm. go to be the advertisement um, right. body for Kenya. Right. Right. That was the whole, the whole aim of that. So after that, um, then, yeah. So with Phyllis Candier, my advisor, we were, you know, going around marketing Kenya, doing great things. Mm -hmm. um, and really just, just p pushing on, you know, yeah. um, Kenya's really going out there. People are just like, you know, the marketing tourism numbers are going up. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, then, I then gave birth to my son in a, one of my eldest Udi in 2013. Right. So I took time out. Yeah. Um, I took maternity leave. By the time I came back, it was a switch mm -hmm. of ministry. So by that time, Balala came in, yeah. um, and uh, Phyllis Kendi went to East Africa Community. Right. So at that point in time, it was now okay. What, what are we? What are you going to do? Um, then huge scandal hit at KICC, yeah. the big WTO. Mm -hmm. um, Just for the record, I want to make it very clear, mm -hmm. um, WTO, I was not even in the country, right? Um, yeah. I uh, A lot of my births, my child births mm -hmm. have been um, pretty, pretty, taken a toll on me. Right. So I actually gave birth in, in the UK yeah. to my to my eldest son. So when WTO was actually kicking off, mm -hmm. but you know how media is, they love to put everything together. CEO, thieving, <laughs> da 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 All of that. It yeah. was it was my predecessor. Right. Um, but that's how I became the CEO of KICC. Well, mm. acting, you know. Yeah. Um, the top three management were all sent home. Mm -hmm. So head of marketing was left. You know, yeah. CEO's gone home. Yeah. Head of operations has gone home. Mm -hmm. Head of finance has gone home. Mm -hmm. The next person left is marketing. Right. That's me. So um, I remember we were getting ready to go on a state visit to Germany. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, my CS Balala called me in and was like, You know, so, and we're leaving that night. Yeah. So he was like, um, you're going to stay. And I was like, okay, fine. You know, you're not going to, whatever. Yeah. You know, I was thinking, great. Mm -hmm. You know, every time my boss is out of the country, yeah. I can actually have time with my kids. Right. You know, um, not in a bad way, but that's really yeah. what it is because you're not being called. You're not, yeah. when you're, when you're working for government, right. um, you actually don't have time. That's why I never planned any holidays, nothing with any of my kids because I, you're called at any time, time. you know, yeah. you could be sitting here and in two hours you're being told head to Mombasa, we've got a function or get on a plane and do something. So it's right. not your own time. So I was thinking, woo, you know, mm -hmm. you guys are going for about at least a week. Yeah. I can spend time with my kids, you right. know? So, um, I was like, okay, fine. I was like, so I gave him all the notes. And I said, this is what you're talking point. This is what you're going to do. And mm -hmm. remember this and remember that. And da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Um, And he was like, yeah, you know, um, actually what we're going to do is we're going to send you back to KICC. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, brilliant. I'm like, you know, I've got so many ideas there now, yeah. you know, marketing. Right. We've got the helipad. We can do all of that. And, you know, I think definitely now is a concert space that we can really do. Mm -hmm. He's like, that's all great, but you're going back as acting CEO. And I just froze. I was like, mm -hmm. uh Okay. Um, I'm a very shy person. It right. may not, um, if there's a job I have to do, it trumps me being shy. Mm -hmm. But um, I, if I can, I just, I like to just be at home. You know, right. I like to just spend time with my friends and family quietly. You know, um, I do like, if I like to go out, I do like to have a good time. But um, if I'm so much in the forefront, mm -hmm. even learning after being CEO of KICC, I've, I've taken more of a step back yeah. when I don't have to be there. Mm -hmm. So I was like, huh? He's like, yep. So he's like, in fact, actually, the board are meeting right now. They're waiting for you. Take this letter and off you go. <laughs> so, thank God I was wearing something great that day. I mean, not great, but it wasn't, you know, yeah. whatever. It's a red sweater, had my little bag, you know, little red pumps, ballet flats. And I walked in and I just knocked on the door at um, 
mm-hmm. the VIP lounge is what they call it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they said, come in and I opened the door and the chair was sitting there with the board yeah. and everything. And I'm like, hi, you know, I've been sent. And he, he was like, shh, we're waiting for somebody. Because um, they obviously know me as, you know, being head of advisor to the cabinet secretary yeah. or even head of marketing. So right. when it's a board meeting, they're like, we'll get to you. Yeah. You know, you're here. That's great. But, you know, I know you're over the ministry. It's fine. This mm-hmm. is the chair now. So he was like, just wait in the other room. So I was like, okay, fine. Um, and this was at, gosh, like maybe 10 o'clock now in the morning. Right. So um, went across into the room and I sat there and I sat and I sat. And then at 12 o'clock, I came knocking on the door again. And I was like, hi, I said, get back. So I'm like, okay, fine. Mm. So I go and sit there, I go back and I sit there and I'm just like, mm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was about 2.30 mm-hmm. and I go knocking on the door again and he was like, fine, come through. We've been waiting for somebody, but uh, you know how ministry is. It's just clearly yeah. it's not going to happen. Right. I was like, hi, I've got, I've just been asked to deliver something to you. Yeah. So the chair takes the envelope, opens it, reads it, looks at me, reads it, <laughs> looks, at you. looks at me, right. reads it, and is like, oh, bored. This is our new acting CEO. <laughs> this is <laughs> the know, person we've been Penny waiting. drops, you know, it's like, yeah. boom. Um, and of course, at that time, everybody knew who I was just because of the, the you know, family or whatever and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I tell you, you know, Philip, my life changed after that. It was, yeah. um, the board, I have to say, were very supportive, you know. Um, here I was, you know, president's niece, mm-hmm. probably nepotism. They never said it, but they're thinking that, you know, yeah. this young person, what the hell could she possibly even know about no. tourism? Right. Um, even running a parastatal, is, you know, this is this is not a joke. Yeah. This is the top five parastatals in the country. Right. Are they mad? You know, um, again, young, young, younger. Mm-hmm. Um, probably at that time, I was the youngest female CEO ever to be in government. Right. Um, so th- everything was not in my favor. Mm-hmm. You know, um, of course, then statement has to go out the next day. Yeah. And that is when I got to face Twitter for the first time. Mm-hmm. K-O-T. K-O-T. Um <laughs> I even still to this day, I, I shake. I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it was, and quite rightly so, because yeah. again, I mean, you're, yeah. you're in the public domain. You're, right. you're full game, you're fair game. Yeah. You know, so it was kind of like, president's niece, what does she know? Da, mm-hmm. da. And you're just reading it and you're just like, oh my gosh, they're talking about me. Yeah. You know, um, the whole country's against me. <laughs> you know, so you think, you're just yeah. like, oh my gosh. Right. You know, Um and uh, I was just told, you know, don't reply to any message. Mm-hmm. Let your work speak for itself. Yeah. Um, and that was probably the best advice that, um, you know, I was given. Right. And, you know, off I went. So got into KICC and um, I have to say it was a very, um, gosh, what can you say? It was a beast of a mm-hmm. place. I mean, you had things from corruption. You had, you know, underpaid staff. You mm-hmm. had just, a, uh, you know, bad practices, policies, mm-hmm. everything. Right. You know, so um, just one by one, mm-hmm. just tackling that, you know. Like I said, I'm a marketer by profession. So, yeah. um, you know, of course, in government, I mean, it's not that I didn't have any finance background, but you can help yourself with, with different um, trainings you can go to. Or, yeah. And again, you know, if you create a good team around you, mm-hmm. you know, then you're, then you're set, you right. know, and, um, right. you know, started, you know, doing things where it's, I'm not signing anything before, you know, anything after 1 PM. Yeah. Nothing is ever an emergency. Mm-hmm. That's why I became CEO, acting CEO here because of WTO where everything was emergency yeah. and just no policies were followed, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and slowly by slowly, you know, it, mm-hmm. um, I was getting there in there by like six o'clock in the morning and I was leaving at midnight. I didn't see my kids. I was just firefighting, you know. Um, I I got to see all my kids walk on WhatsApp. I have a group for me and my my nannies, you know, so anything that happens. And do I regret it? No. I mean, that's the life that I chose. It's not Mm -hmm. that I I didn't have to, but, you know, it's it's, it's a calling, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, And, uh, yeah, just getting in there and... 
you know, slowly by slowly, you're just winning people over one by one mm-hmm. by one. Right. And even if I'm not, who cares? I'm just getting on with it. Yeah. You know, um, I'm not here to win people over. I'm here to do a job. Right. Um, and um, I'm also no nonsense, right? So, mm. again, people got to see that. You know, there'd yeah. be times when, you know, some ministry people would be like, from other places, be like, you know, do this and this is what it's going to be. And I'm like, actually, no, we no. don't have to. This yeah. is a commercial entity here. Yes. Why are we making losses? We're making losses because this, this, and this. So yeah. actually, I respect your views, but this right. is what we are going to now be doing. Right. You know, so, um, you know, money was made at KICC. Yeah. You know, people don't want to maybe talk about it or anything like that, but <laughs> it was it was made. I mean, we were, you know, and when I leave, when I left KICC, yeah. um, and I look at how we are now, mm-hmm. you know, um, I left a legacy, I believe, you know. Yeah. People may not want to talk about it. People may not want to give me credit for it just because that's just how Kenyans are. You know, it's, it's very hard to, to say well done or, right. or anything like that. They're waiting for you to mess up. They're waiting, right. they will come for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. For sure. You know, but uh, um, it's not small what I did, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and whether it's being recognized or not, yeah. um, it's, it's very visual, right. right? You can see, you can see. Yeah. Um, and that's all that matters, so... Um, yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. Well, credit to you. I think after you you left, we've not had any scandal <laughs> about yes. KICC yeah. until recently when we were being told a percentage of it will be sold. Mm-hmm. Um, I know the figures are public, but roughly, you know, for us from the outside looking in, it's just this building, iconic building. But for it to be the fifth biggest parastatal in the country. How much revenue does it generate annually? I mean, yeah. annually, if it's if you're doing well, if you're doing if you're doing great, I yeah. mean, you could go anywhere over two billion shillings, you know. But of course, there yeah. then you've got your overheads, right? As yeah, well, for sure, right? For sure. But revenue generating, um, right. and then after that, you have your A and A, A and A and A. Mm-hmm. You also have your um, expenditures, salaries, right. also maintenance or anything like that. But right. um, that's what's on the books, you know, yeah. um, and. You know, like you're saying, it, it may just be a building to people. But, and when I say that one of the fifth largest, it's just because of, I mean, you've got your Kenya pipeline or power or yeah, airports yeah, that sure. are making a yeah. lot. You know, we're commercial, yeah, meaning sure. we do not get any money from government, mm. right? We so don't yeah. depend on the exchequer. We're self, self-generating. self Right. Um, and then on top of that, you know, very few people... And that's what I'm saying, even in that position as, as CEO of KICC. Yeah. Um, it's it's a call to service. Being a mm-hmm. civil servant, you know, maybe it's kind of been lost mm-hmm. over the generations, over yeah. the years, over the decades. Right. But to be able to represent your country, mm-hmm. you know, as a civil servant, and that's what mm-hmm. you're doing. Yeah. You're you're serving mm-hmm. the people of Kenya. Absolutely. You know, you're 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 meant to be at your most best mm-hmm. and protect whatever you're being told to be a custodian of. Right. I happen to be custodian of, K, of KICC. Yeah. Um, and there it's, it's double fault because it's also an iconic building. Mm-hmm. You know, it's being told to look, being look after the Eiffel Tower yeah. or Statue of Liberty or, yeah. you know, yeah. Big Ben. It's, it's like that. Right. Um, so it's nervous. You know, when I left, I just was like, thank God it didn't burn down. Thank God it didn't, you know. <laughs> every day you're just thinking that phone call comes in from my director of operations mm-hmm. combo and you're thinking, mm-hmm. I'm like, is the building still up? <laughs> yes. Okay, fine. What is it? What is it? What you know, is that's, that's, there's no drama then. There's, we can handle it if that's the case, you know. Um, getting crazy requests for landing a chopper on the thing. I'm like, hey, even if we can, not on my watch, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's a lot of pressure. Yeah, I can imagine. You know, um, and then also given who you are as, you know, a, a, f- a, f- a member of, of a particular family or yeah. in close proximity. It's not... Right. You know, it's a lot of things coming up and then you're female. Ah, what do you even know? And no. you don't even know anything about tourism and mm-hmm. uh, all of that. But KICC is special. KICC yeah. is, uh, it's not only an iconic building, it's right. a it's a landmark, you know. Absolutely. Before people even had phones or, or mobile phones, let's say. It's like, let's meet at KICC. Yes, let's, um, you know, there's a lot of history to that. Right. Huge Many meetings have happened there, yeah. um, building a lot of money or, or de- re- generating revenue for the economy. Because mm-hmm. you have in tourism, you have a delegate and you have a tourist. Mm-hmm. So a tourist comes in and they will go anywhere. It's the beach, it's the safari, it's yeah. to Kakamega Forest, it's it's a tourist. Mm-hmm. But a business tourist um, is somebody who comes in and most probably will be paid yeah. by their company. 
Right. Right. So it's not out of their own pocket, pocket. most of the time. Yeah. So they have, and they have per diem and they mm-hmm. have spending money. So they're able to spend more. Right. So again, that's why a country should do the best that they can to mm-hmm. accommodate for that because your restaurants, where they're eating, they want to eat, they want mm-hmm. to go out, they want mm-hmm. to, they want to experience, they want the delegate experience. Right. And that was one of the things I really want, I really, before I left, KCC was wanting to push that. Mm-hmm. And it's not only, it's beyond KCC. Yeah. Because now, I mean, with, 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 Whatever's mm-hmm. happening at KICC, even if then event or no event, whatever's happening, mm-hmm. you've got other hotels around yeah. and other convention centers. So people are still coming in for business meetings. Right. So you still are a delegate. Kenya is still on on, on the map, yeah. you know. Um, so being able to, why is KICC special? It's, you know, <laughs> being called to service at that level, mm-hmm. custodian. Right of such a big institution. Yeah. Not many people, five of us probably, can only say we've been able to do that as CEO, you know? Right. Um, and being able to serve your country at the most, one of the most highest levels, yeah. you know? Um, every time we had an event, I didn't sleep. I'd have WhatsApp groups and, you know, yeah. again, I'd be peeling in to mm-hmm. KIC at like 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. And if something was not done, I'd call everybody and be like, I'm up, you're up, we've got an event happening here. Right. Angta's happening. Yeah. Where the hell is everybody? Right. We're not going to just wait until the morning. We'll sleep when the event is over. You know, so um, things like that. So every day was different there. And then, of course, then it's also the house for <laughs> politicians. So every day it's like, so, you know, I'd just be sitting in my office and I'd just see, oh, that's that governor coming in. Mm-hmm. That's that MP coming in, mm-hmm. little entourage. It's a city within a city, <laughs> KICC. Is. You know, it's it's a golden square. You've yeah. got everything around from city hall to treasury to parliament to, you know, to everywhere. It's mm-hmm. I don't think people realize what KICC actually is, you know, mm-hmm. um, it's 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 pressure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pressure. I can imagine, but, especially yeah. with with government interest there. And uh, now. This on a larger scale now, you being CEO of KCC now, of course, the conversations you needed to have a lot are why is, is how do we make Kenya the top number one destination mm-hmm. for conventions and yeah. and businesses? And I, f- I hear we are losing a lot to Rwanda and you being there, what stopped Kenya from develop? I mean, KCC is mm-hmm. awesome. It's just one. We're a country of 50 million. Why can't we have five, 10 more KCCs? And I, I get it. And I think that's, and I have to say, Rwanda's done very good marketing. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's, it's all about perception. It's perception. Right? Yeah. So if we're going to talk about perception, mm-hmm. now where Rwanda is mm-hmm. in terms of their largest convention yeah. hall yeah. is our KICC Savo. That's it. Right? Right. So if we were to push KICC to the max mm-hmm. with the outside space where you put up the tents, you have mm-hmm. the indoor space, right. you could have 40,000 people. Oof. You could okay. hold a 40,000 conference. Right. You could hold a 60,000 concert. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. Utilizing the grounds, mm-hmm. people standing. Yeah. Right? Because obviously mm-hmm. it's, it's less. Yeah. It's 40 because if you've got tables and people are sitting, yeah. right? right. You, 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 the space gets less. Um, so, yes. Uh, Rwanda have done a great job in marketing, but and that's also the numbers that come out are also through ICA. Mm-hmm. So ICA is an association, mm-hmm. and through an association, it's obviously don't get me wrong. Rwanda is is doing a lot in meetings, yeah. right? Yeah. But actually, if you were to go toe for toe, Ke- uh, Kenya, not even mm-hmm. KSC, Kenya, mm-hmm. um, does more. Yeah. Right. Um, it's because, like I said, you've got Safari Park. You've mm-hmm. got you know any any property that has a ballroom or meeting space Mm -hmm. and even just with that um but again we were never at our potential and that was one thing i always wanted to push because if you look at the tourism numbers and it is just over two million yeah you know tourists um tourists and actually if i'm going to say uh, and i'm going to call it out it's pathetic yeah yeah i'm going to i've called it i've kept very quiet but i'm i'm now speaking and i'm now saying yeah yeah Mm -hmm. um the london eye Mm -hmm. gets a lot more gets five million, just That's... the London Eye. You you get my point. <laughs> yeah. Um, so when we're sitting celebrating, yes, we can celebrate, and it's it, it's high records. Mm-hmm. But we can we can do a lot more. Oh, yeah. You know, Same and that's thing. why we all need to just come together, private and government. You know, I'm not calling anybody out and saying somebody's not done well, somebody because there's a lot of things that people don't understand. Right. Right. You know, um, and even being in government and even 
also being, first starting off in private sector and right. then going into government and going back to private sector. Yeah. I see it and I get it, right. you know. Um, but again, back to your numbers with, with Rwanda. Yes, they have a lot of numbers. Kenya, we have a lot. Yeah. Um, two point something million tourists a mm -hmm. couple of years ago, a year ago maybe. Yeah. Um, one third of that is business events, oh, yeah. is conferencing. Right. But we're probably only at 30%. Of our utilization so imagine if we had the infrastructure imagine if we had the resources imagine if we had the actual push right. um and that's just a ripple effect because yeah. if you have that amount of people coming in right. the economy really i i have you know another, wins yeah, yeah yeah absolutely i i see your personality this is the first time we've met face yes, to face yeah, yeah. and i can tell you the type of person who needs to get things done asap yeah. like right now right here yes yeah, yeah. Whew. How does your personality fit into government? Because <coughs> this is a question I keep getting asked and they always, okay, Phil, what if one day you were given a position in government? And I always go like, hey, I think they'll kick me out first <laughs> day because, oh my God, protocol, procedure, things don't move as fast. How did you create your environment and your world and how did you fit into government? I think it's... You know, being able to have a space, you know, mm. also fortunate enough where, like I said, we're not ex depending on ex uh, the exchequer. That's mm. just one part of it, because whether or not you've got money in the, well, you do need to have money in your in your account to, yeah. to move. Right. But um, there's other ways about it. There's strategic partnerships. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about going out there and making noise. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get me wrong. You've got other arms of government as well. You have yeah. at the national level, you know, mm -hmm. um, you've got the head of state. You know, we've had yeah. the four, four, five heads, fifth, five heads of state now. Mm -hmm. They're all marketing Kenya yeah. in their own way. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's great. Um, you've got a, a body called Magical Kenya. Right. Right. That right. is, um, if utilized correctly, mm -hmm. if done correctly, mm -hmm. um, you know, nothing happens. Everything happens by design. Right. You, you get. Yeah. And, you know, Jomo Kenyatta, when he was the first president of Kenya, mm -hmm. he had a vision all those years ago with, with tourism. Right. Right. And yeah. he said, you know, what we're going to do is we're going to, he was advised. Mm -hmm. So he said, we're going to build bombers of Kenya. Mm -hmm. to safeguard our heritage yeah. and culture. It's not even tourism. If you look at it technically, mm -hmm. it should be under heritage. It's heritage and culture. Yeah. It's safeguarding mm -hmm. our, our culture. Mm -hmm. That's one pillar. Right. Another pillar is this product mm -hmm. that you have for tourists, mm -hmm. beach and safari, mm -hmm. right? But now, if you're going to have people coming mm -hmm. to Kenya, you're going to have people building properties, mm -hmm. hotels. Right. How are they going to run? Mm -hmm. So we're going to build Utili College. Yeah. That is how Utili College was birthed. Right. And it had the Swiss, who were the best hoteliers, mm -hmm. come in and manage that. And even when you go around the world to today, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. A lot of the GMs around the world mm -hmm. in the big chains mm -hmm. are all Kenyan. Now, they may be 60 years old, that generation of 60 years old. They mm -hmm. are graduates of Utili of, that, of those days. Oof, okay. You understand. So yeah. it was a working, mm -hmm. it was a working system. system yeah. yeah. Right. Um, and then after that, it was like, even those days, he was advised about business events, mm -hmm. conferences. Right. That is why KICC was built. KICC was built so it could host the, you know, World Bank. Right. You know, so even when you look at KICC and it was built all those years ago, just, yeah. we just celebrated 50 years last year. Yeah. Right. Um, you have all of the amenities that you need to be a world-class facility. When you go and you see the front and you see those zigzags, those are wheelchair ramps. You, yeah, you see yes, all yes. of that is there. So a long time ago, they built mm -hmm. the, the building mm -hmm. to be able to be international and international standards. Right. You know, because conferencing those days was a huge revenue and a part of tourism. Yeah. You know, so as you move on and as you go on, things have changed, things have done whatever. You know, I'm not saying it was only focusing on tourism, but that's my sector. Yeah. So I can see that vision. If someone's mm -hmm. sitting, that was also mirrored in many other things. Mm -hmm. Agriculture, farmland. Right. This region is going to film, uh, is, is going to farm this, is going to do that. You mm -hmm. know, this region is going to be doing this. Everybody had an allocated slot mm -hmm. of what it is that they need to do. Right. And you put it all together. Um, it's the betterment of, of, of Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I can comfortably speak about tourism. And when I look at it, that's why I'm saying, you know, we've kind of got lost in our ways because, mm -hmm. as you say, mm -hmm. you know, you're wanting to market a product. You're wanting to um, do so much. But 
We're the only country in the world that has a national park in the city. City, yeah. Market that. Yeah. Right? Right. We're the only, we've got the largest amount of bird species in, the, in one country in the world. Largest amount of species of birds. Now, even when you look at that there, you've got, you know, uh, China, Far East, all of that stuff there, and they're avid bird watchers. Now, you market bird watching mm -hmm. to the Asian market, and you just want to get 1% of the bird watchers. That's 5 million people. Oof. 50 million people. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. it's, you know, <laughs> let's sit down and let's people. see what we can do, and we just go, go, go. You, you understand? Um, you've just gotten me going on this government thing. I'm so excited. Um, I have met several people, a lot of people from government. And when you talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, they're very idealistic. They have the numbers. They have the ideas. Like you're talking about tourism. And then what happens when they get there? What, because genuinely, I've, I've talked to a couple of CSs. I've talked to a couple of CEOs in different parastatals. And they have their numbers on their fingertips. They have the ideas. They know how we can do this. Like all the brilliant ideas you're talking about. But how come it's never done? What happens there? <laughs> what happens at that I guess level? We're <laughs> <laughs> well, asking why it's not. Well, I'm not a CS, right? Yeah. So I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm a decision maker, but I'm not at that level. Yeah, yeah for right. Sure. And also, in all due respect, it's, yeah. it's um, in government. You respect the hierarchy and, and yeah. where it is. So, yeah. um, even though I'm CEO of KICC, and back to the question of you asking, you know, what what could you do? I could do. What I may have great ideas, yeah. but I'm not at that level where right. I can I can implement some of them in yeah. my role as or position as CEO. Mm -hmm. But other things they they get um, they may need to be at a higher position, or I may need to be in a higher position, right? Right. Um, but having said that, everybody comes in with their own ideas, and you and it's hectic. Yeah. You know, um, government can be hectic because it's like. It's finding, I'll speak for tourism, right? Because I, okay. I can't start speaking about agricultural yeah. farming or whatever. Right. But it may or may not be the same. But from what I see in tourism, you know, it's it's a very, you come in and you, you've got to now basically just get out there and, and, and start. Mm -hmm. It's a numbers game. I've got to get yeah. numbers. I've got to do this. But um, and it's also, I guess, your mindset. You know, every, mm. every CS has tried, definitely. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not here bashing anybody because... Yes. It's it's sleepless nights. It's not easy. True. You know, it may sound easy, but when you're there and you've got to now juggle this organization or this foundation or mm. this group of people, mm. all that, you you actually don't even have time to get out and implement yourself. You right. know, um, you better have a plan. You yeah. better stick to it. Right. Um, it doesn't matter who's coming and saying, well, I think we need to do this. I think we need to do that. Right. You know, same as a head of state. You know, once you become a head of state, respect that person and be like, okay, this is where you've come. Right. Get on and let's see what you're going to do for the country. Right. You know, yeah. same with a governor, same with a deputy governor, same with a, uh, an MP. Mm -hmm. Whatever role that you are playing mm -hmm. in government, um, once you're in that seat, just get yeah. on and do it. Right. You know, um, and so when you say what happened or why is it not happening, you know, many good things have come out of it. We've, yeah. you know, I can't say it's been all doom and gloom. We've right. kind of gotten our name out there. Right. Um, but, you know, sometimes you can also just lose sight, I guess. I don't, I can't, I can't, you yeah. know, put me there and let's see what happens. But I, I don't know. <laughs> okay, you know, let's campaign. Not like a sugar <laughs> no, for but, um, anyway, we'll Yeah, but you know, it's, it's, it's a yeah. very, it's a very, um, it's tricky. It's a very thin line mm. because you've got private sector and public sector. Yeah. And even sitting there and, and looking at that, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think what you have to just do is bring them together, mm -hmm. bring them to the table. And we did have that. We did have stakeholder meetings, whereas private and public right. sector, you know, um, and how can we help? How can we do? And again, you're sitting there. It's like, OK, let's see about Diani. You know, there was, mm. you know, talk of extending the Akunda. Mm -hmm. um, airstrip, yeah. also changing, hopefully maybe changing the name from Okunda to Diani, right. because of course people from outside, when tourists come in, they know Diani, Diani. right? Yeah. But yeah. sheer panic kicks in when they've landed in Okunda and right. they're being told, welcome to Okunda. And we've had tourists who just freak out. And they're like, I wanted to go to Diani. This is Diani. Diani. We just call <laughs> it Okunda, you That's know? So those That's are small little yeah. type of things. But again, on the biggest scale, the oh. national scale, mm -hmm. um, where do you start? I mean, you, you, I guess you have to have a plan, and it's wow. and it's a big docket. 
Right. You know, tourism is not a it's not a joke. And now that you've got wildlife in there, right. um, I think it was right to have moved heritage out mm. because it would have been too much. Yeah. You know, heritage on its own can Absolutely. can can just do enough, you know, Absolutely. the arts, the culture, all of that kind of stuff. But um tourism and wildlife go well together. Um whatever you're doing for tourism, you also do for wildlife. Yeah. Um you know, and, and that's our our backbone, right, you know, uh as part of our economy. But um I think what happened is that it's overwhelming. Mm. Oh, it is. Maybe that. Maybe imagine. that's what happened. Where <laughs> you come and you have the great ideas, and it just it just gets overwhelming, and then you just are like, you, you know, know what? we will probably spend a whole day and a half just <laughs> trying to dissect government and business, and let's get back to Nana. Yes. And you growing up with the name that you have, you growing up with the association that you have with the Kenyatta family. I, I can't even begin to picture what that life looks like for you. You know, from us looking outside, it looks like you're very uh, favored, like you get probably get things a bit easier, <laughs> you know. And I'm curious what your experience has been like growing up with that name. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think first, um, I'd say both sides, mm -hmm. you know, maybe because it's political. Yeah. People would know the Kenyatta name or they don't. But when you now talk about the Gishaga name, mm -hmm. um, my grandfather, right. so my father's father, yeah. um, B.M. Gishaga, yes. Bethel Moreka. Yeah. So he was, you know, um, head of BAT, uh, chair of nation, right. you know, renowned in, in, the, in the business yeah. sector. Right. Um, so I think it's from both sides, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I Also, my grandmother, right. um, Jemima mm -hmm. Doya Gishaga, yeah. she was the first female member of parliament. Oh, wow. People don't know that, you see. Really? So again... Yeah. Um, maybe I'm adding more fuel to the fire. So now you're <laughs> thinking, okay, gosh, you know, I'm talking about this here, but hey, it's even sounding a bit more hectic. So yeah. it is there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I, my father's a very private person, so I don't want to get into too much there. You can Google yeah. him and see with that. Um, mm -hmm. But he's a he's he's a, a renowned international businessman. Right. You know, um, uh, again, you know, working with and alongside people like Tiny Roland, or mm -hmm. you know, when when when. Um, Lonro, my father was head of Lonro. He was head of Standard Group. He was um, yeah. head of, you know, the, the Lonro Group. And mm -hmm. Lonro Group had a lot of, um, yeah. you know, uh, with, with that huge. and stuff. So, right. again, it's from all sides. And, of mm -hmm. course, yes, you can't, like you're saying, it's this other side, on my mother's side. Right. You know, um, her father was Jomo Kenyatta, who was the right. first president. I mean, maybe ask them as well what it was like. You know, we're yeah. just uh, <laughs> third generation down. Right. But, um, again, yes, it's... It, um, it's it's it has its benefits and it also doesn't and it has it's not mm -hmm. not great positive and negative yeah you know um, you're talking about maybe you've had things easier mm -hmm. Pro probably not you know maybe you think okay maybe when you're saying having easier like you know um, people hear the name and they're like oh you know Karibu welcome da -da -da, all of that kind of yeah. stuff yeah. but um, I, I think it's been harder because you know people already you know. Your think, credit is taken away from you. Yeah, and I think probably the time where it's probably had the the most effect, mm -hmm. negative or positive, is probably my personal life, yeah. right? Um, you know, it's uh, when people are... I, I don't have a partner. I have the, the father of my kids, mm -hmm. but it's been very hard to date, right? Um, because you may go on a date and you're yeah. thinking, okay, this is great, this is yeah. perfect. And they're like, when, when can I meet him? You're like, meet who? And they're like, the president. And you're like, oh, God, this is not going anywhere. Bye, <laughs> later, let's move on, right. you know? Or, yeah. um, again, you get, you know, you get into an argument or something, and they're like, well, you wouldn't understand, you know? You've you've had everything in life. You've, right. you know, um, and again, it can also be a bit of a challenge because I think it, it doesn't help. Mm -hmm. I could have just been a Gishaga or a Kenyatta, mm -hmm. but on top of that, throw in CEO of KICC. Right. I'm very vocal. I'm I'm a I'm a boss. I'm yeah. you know so people men kind of tend to yeah. shy away or just think, you know, what I also get a lot of what possibly could I give somebody yeah. who has everything. That's you know? True. <laughs> and um but it's not though. It's, it's not, not the, it's, it's not, not because okay. <laughs> as much as you see that side of it, you know yeah. Um, sounding very Notting Hilly now, you know. Yeah. I'm just a girl <laughs> asking you to no, but it is it is basically that, yeah. you know. Um, and I'm very different when I'm when I'm in the boardroom, mm -hmm. in the office. Yes, that's that's one side of me. Right. But at home, I do have you know my my biggest dream is to to have you know a partner 
you yeah. know, everybody. And I think that's why even COVID was, I, it was very, very difficult for me. Yeah. Because when everybody's got a partner, they've got someone they can, they can sit with at home. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't have a bed pillow. I don't have, you know, it's yeah. looking after kids. Right. It's numerous of staff. Right. But during the most scariest time of my life, who am I communicating to? Yeah. So it's, it's wanting that, per, that ride or die person. Right. You know, and when nobody wants to take the time. So like I'm saying, I may be who you see out there, yeah. but I would love to cook for somebody. You know, I would love to go on holiday with somebody. I would love yeah. to um, experience. Exactly. Life. You know, yeah. when people are like, what's your bucket list? My bucket list is to, you know, be kissed in the rain. My bucket right. list is to be taken on a date, right. you know. Um, and I mean, it probably sounds weird, but I've, I've, I've. You know, probably gone on three dates and I'm 46, you know. Normally it's like oh. I go on a date, you pay the bill. You want to go on holiday, you pay for the holiday. First class, let's go here. You know, so it's it's reinventing all of that. It's not... Um, mm-hmm. So again, you know, you may see something what you see out there. Right. But those other smaller things. So I don't want to say the name is a curse because it's never going to be. Mm-hmm. Either side. Yeah. You know, um, I'm extremely proud of the family that... I have fallen into. Right. Um, I've I've been able to to learn from both sides. We all get along. It's 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 business. It's politics. It's learning right. lessons. Right. You understand. Um, but it's had its sacrifices. And yeah. would I ever change it? No. Yeah. Um, by the time you start as a person saying, "Oh, I I I would I wish I wasn't from this family," or "I'm cursed because of this here," yeah. you've you've not you've not made use of who you are. Right. You know. Um, So I joke and I'm like, yeah, maybe I'm like Elizabeth first, you know, I'm when she says I'm married to England, you know, I'm like, I'm married to Kenya, you know, the country. Right. But um, it, it has been hard in that way yeah. because nobody wants to get to know you for who you are. They That's already true. assume yeah. who you are. They assume that, um, like I said, what could I ever give you? So mm-hmm. again, I'm just not going to bother giving you a birthday gift, mm-hmm. right? Or Christmas gift. That's their excuse, mm-hmm. um, you know, or I'm never going to amount to anything and it's also difficult you know it's it's human nature right you'll find very few men comfortable um being with a woman like me yeah i guess it, it could be a threat it could yeah. be if people like smiling and I'm like whatever but you know once all the jokes that i'm like ah you know she could look after me she could take care of me but really mm-hmm. um no you know okay. um you you you'll find very few people who would be okay with you know seeing it like actually you know this is not a threat Mm -hmm. we could actually work together it's not like oh she can finance me she can do whatever Mm -hmm. um i'll be your biggest cheerleader right you know what i'm saying i'll be your biggest fan you know Mm -hmm. when you come home you want you want someone to talk to a soundboard nothing monetary you know but um people don't go beyond the name so yeah (laughs) And <laughs> I, I hope I could help you with that. But I, I, I sincerely hear what you're saying. Um, I think one of the best definitions I got about marriage and having a lifetime partner is, I mean, there is there are eight billion human beings on this mm. planet. So your life could go about and just be very insignificant. But having that person experiencing life with you mm. and you come home and tell them this and this happened. And so... Basically, your life is big to someone. That makes yeah. you super significant. Uh, f- f- wow. <laughs> That's, um, you know, we started from, you know, your early childhood years yes. all the way to where you are. Mm-hmm. And just sitting here and I'm, you got shipped out of this country at seven years old, yeah. <laughs> boarding. But you have so much love for this country. And I'm just trying to pull at this thread Was it your way of reconnecting with your roots, with your family, like just being stuck to this root of Mama Kenya? Mm. And first of all, let me just give you your flowers and your props. A lot of us thought you were given that CEO job at KCC because of your name. But prior to you being CEO of KCC, you had been working for more than two decades Mm -hmm. in the tourism sector. So you totally deserve that role. Thank you. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. Yeah, so let's go back to seven years, and you've been shipped out. You have you. Who are you closest to, mom or dad, at this point? Well, at that point, like I mentioned, you know, my parents had yeah. been divorced when yeah. I was three. Yeah. So um, we were living with my father. We right. So my mom and and all of that. She was very much in our lives. Yeah. But um, 
but then even at that point and was it later on coming back like you mentioned is it re- mm. trying to reconnect with the country yeah um i don't think so because or with family because mm. um i was just going to school there but every half term every holiday we came back to kenya all right so i was able to still connect with family and, okay. and see everybody so it wasn't like 10 years of no diaspora kenya. you know <laughs> yeah. coming back and it's like woo yeah so um you know i think i think it was um like i said fortunate enough to 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 leave the country right. for school and right. that's really what it was yeah. you know um and i think also more so i'll speak for myself mm-hmm. being dyslexic having the learning disability mm-hmm. uh, my father wanted the best right. for me and he was said he, he, he's dyslexic you're never yeah. going to use it as a crutch yeah. yeah just because it takes you longer to read something or you spell something backwards or mm-hmm. you what, don't don't use it as a crutch yeah, yeah. he's like look there are people here who may not have sight they may not have what it's it's not and i'm not pointing it out because that's a disability right. no people are getting on and doing it mm-hmm. as long as your heart is beating right right and you have sound mind and body mm-hmm. it doesn't matter if you have 10 limbs two limbs this here mm-hmm. we all are not the same yeah. what are you going to do with your life right. you know and of course you took me a while but i got there mm-hmm. but um So I think coming back to Kenya was just um you know I think yeah you it's it's a marketer's dream <laughs> okay. to to market the country to you know the country, um yeah. I wasn't at KTB I I went to K I went to KCC which was mm-hmm. you know marketing it in the business aspect yes. but again I acted like I was also part of KTB right. Right. I wasn't like, oh, because now I'm not CEO of KTB, right. I'm not going to market the country because mm-hmm. I'm not CEO unless I get given that position. Mm-hmm. No, before I even came into government, right. I was marketing the country, right. you know, in whatever space and, you know, anyone that would want to hear about it. Okay. So I think it was a, it's it's a calling, it's a love for the country. It's a calling, you know, it's um, a love for the country. I, I, I love Kenya, I, um, you know, and it's... Um, Yeah, it's it's All right. great. Yeah, All right. Yeah. I, you know, I I hope Kenya uh, becomes the partner, the right partner for you. <laughs> yes. yes. Um, I love so, the country so much. My youngest is called Kenya. Oh wow! So That's my beautiful. my baby, I've got three boys. So right. the youngest is is Kenya, Kenya Guru. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're in Boston. Yes. And is this another mini Kenya? There are a lot of Kenyans. <laughs> But anyways okay. but yeah. yeah and this is this is high school now yes. Yes, yes um and you mentioned something you fell in love with alcohol yes at what point did you what was your first date with alcohol do you remember your first date <laughs> gosh i think it was well that was more social it was having a good time yeah you yeah. know um but then it 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 changed very mm-hmm. you know not very quickly over some years but mm-hmm. um it became social then it became you know gosh it's it's a number it's mm-hmm. you know pressures here pressure there um it can it it can make you forget right you know that intoxication yeah feel mm-hmm. so um yeah i mean i think when when things started getting a bit more serious mm-hmm. well, you know by the time i was i, I was finishing up mm-hmm. um i was on a crate of beer a day and half a bottle of of southern comfort or Oof. whiskey so that's 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 serious And this is at what age? At um 21. 20. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So I've always heard yeah. that um alcoholism is an antidote to pain and I'm just sitting here I'm curious what was this pain because for you to be drinking like that at 21 yeah. what were you drowning what pain I were you drowning? I think it's 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 issues. I mean everyone has issues. Everyone yeah. has yeah. a story. Right. You know, um pressure from here, mm-hmm. something you want to forget, right. something you don't want to face. Right. You know. Um and very quickly mm-hmm. it's addictive. Mm-hmm. You know they, they you know they always keep thinking you oh, no, no but if you do the research you know it's an addiction. It's mm-hmm. a, it's a, it's you you then start getting used to it. So again what would happen is that by the time I was going to rehab mm-hmm. um when I was you know eventually detoxing yeah. you know for the two three days I was shaking like a, like a drug addict would do yeah. you know because of the withdrawal symptoms. Yeah. So it had gotten to that point mm-hmm. where um You know at the beginning you're drinking to forget you're drinking to to yeah it's literally to forget it's to not have to deal with things um, right. you know you've maybe messed up in life or mm-hmm. things have happened to you mm-hmm. and very quickly it can spin right right to the point where you even forget why you're drinking mm-hmm. you just know you've got to get that drink yeah. and that's what was happening and I then was the person in the bar mm-hmm. you know um, that lone person you see with a drink nursing right. a drink that was right. me um, at age 20 20. 
what are you doing? You know, um, you think you're funny, you're fighting, you're, you know, getting into accidents, you're, you know, um, getting arrested for drunken disorder. It got that far, yeah. you know, um, and, and eventually it, it got to the point where I just was like, you know, I, I, I didn't think I, I had a way out, right. you know, so you start thinking of suicide, you start thinking of all of these type of things because it's that vicious of a cycle. You know, um, I have to give my brother a lot of credit. Mm -hmm. You know, he 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 saved me. You know, yeah. when I talk about it, he, you know, I, that was that call I made to him. Yeah. You know, I could have made a call to anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, my brother and I are very close. Right. Um, and 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 that was that. You know, and it was it was a s steady coming out of it. Yeah. Still to this day, I'm coming out of it. Yeah. I know I can't drink. It's, it's um, like somebody who's diabetic, mm -hmm. you know, they can't take sugar. They can't, yeah. you know, that's, that's what it means to have a, have a life where I am today. Yeah. I mean, gosh, I can't even imagine what I would be like mm -hmm. having my three boys and mm -hmm. being a, um, a full-blown alcoholic. You know, and I think that's why it, it hits home because there are people who, who are there, yeah. you know, who are still in their addiction, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and as they say with addiction, you've only got three options, right? Mm -hmm. um, to get clean, mm -hmm. jail, mm -hmm. or death. Those are your three options as an, as, a, as an addict. Let's be very clear here, Yeah. yeah. you know? Um, so it's, it's um, I'm just happy I'm sitting here in front of you being able to tell my story or tell people the story, you know? Um, and I get it mm -hmm. because there are a lot of people who are struggling. Mm -hmm. And, and want to get out, right. but have not been able to get out, or um, they get out for a bit and come back, right. you know? And the only thing I can say is just, just keep on at it. Okay. You know, tomorrow's another day. Let's try and live to see that other day. Um, so that's why it's, it's, it holds a real special mm -hmm. place in my heart because okay. um, it's, it's a crazy disease. Um, what, what opportunities did you mess up at this point that, you know, were... A wake up call. <laughs> I've heard of one, and yeah, I'm waiting for us to get there. Yeah. And, and then also, for you to be sober for this long, mm. what type of mental strength do you need to have, and what keeps you going? That you know, yeah. keeps you away from the bottle. I think regrets, mm. um, and even if we call them regrets, I think it's also I like to call it more life lessons. Life right? lessons, um, right? Because when you start saying it's a regret, it kind yeah. of, it, it, it's heavy. Right. You know, um, it, it is a mess up. It is a, let's call it what it is, but I mm -hmm. like to kind of spin it and be like, what yeah. life lesson have I taken from mm -hmm. this? Um, one was obviously the Olympics, 1996, Atlanta. Um, qualified for that, you know, would have been the first um, sprinter for Kenya. You know, 100, 200 meters and... Um, I, I, the way I even qualified was, um, I, did you ever go to JK's? There was a bar in Westland was Havana and above <laughs> Havana, there was JK's. Yeah. Um, anyway, let's not even talk about it. Let's not even put you into this. You know, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe he doesn't drink. Yeah. So let's just see, let's put it there. But not it's about drinking, hanging out. You know, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so anyways, um, and I had had a fantastic day, fantastic right. evening at JK's, you know, yeah. um, I keep joking cause there was these bottles that EABL made was premium, mm -hmm. the old bottles. And they've, they've came back out again in the Greek malts. Mm -hmm. It's basically what malt is now, but it used to be right. called premium. Mm -hmm. You know, partying, partying, telling everyone in the bar, I'm going for my, I'm going to Kasarani later on, you know, joking about like, ha, 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 ha. I'm right. going for my time trial. Yeah. Coach Velzen, um, uh, again, I think he's, I think he's passed on and I'm really sorry if he hasn't, yeah. but he was a Kenya coach at mm -hmm. the time, Velzian. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. So straight from JK's, I had my spikes. Those are the running shoes, mm -hmm. the spikes in them. Right. Um, in, the, in, the, in the back of the car, clearly I wasn't driving. So went yeah. from there, you know, drove, driver drove me off to Kasarani, got there and I was literally like Yeah, plastered, done. yeah. Completely plastered. I mean, I'd been partying, you know. because you're going to run. Yeah, oh, wow. for my time trial, right? <laughs> yeah. So the coach looked at me and was like, get serious. I'm like, you know, and I'm like busy, like, you know, had foul, foul language at the time, right? So yeah. I'm like, you know, beep this, beep that. Right. Tang on my shoes. I'm like, you know, stand over there. Let's go. You right. know, you know, just, I was also very arrogant. Yeah. You know, um, mm -hmm. and, and they, alcohol or any kind of addiction brings out your alter ego, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
So, um, went on, did the time trial, and he just was like, what? He just and he just was like, now imagine with the training, imagine with all of this kind of thing. There I am just like, psh, lighting a cigarette, close to smoke at the time. Yeah. You know, and he's just looking at me like, my God. He's like, if you didn't drink, if you didn't smoke, you, you've done this amount so far. Imagine where we could take it. I'm just like, yeah, later, you know, flicked my cigarette at him, walked off. I was like, did I qualify? He's like, yeah, he qualified. I said, great, bye. And that was it. Yeah. So um, it, it can really, so I know you're like looking like, you know, wow. Um, it's the opportunity no, of a lifetime. I know. I'm like, okay. I know. So, yeah. so missed opportunities, lessons learned, you know. Yeah. Um, I think even there in itself just yeah. is, is a, a whole story for another day kind yeah, of thing. You know, sure. it's just a lot of that. So I'd say that was probably one right. one of my, my biggest life lessons. Right. Um, I think also... You know, I think probably even maybe at that time, mm -hmm. I might have found Mr. Right, yeah. but just was not in the right right frame of mind. Yeah, yeah. But again, I don't want to say Mr. Right because, you know, I've got three amazing boys. Mm -hmm. So again, and I always feel yeah. I'm like, you know, if I did find somebody at that point in time, would it really have, because I wouldn't have had these three amazing boys. boys so yeah. you can look at it either way, you know. Um, and I think just, you, you know, we could be talking about, about things in a very different type of thing, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, that's probably my biggest, the, the, the yeah. running, the track. But now, coming out of that, being able to walk out of that, being able to see where I am today, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, I've got three amazing boys. Yeah. I've, I've got a career. I've got, right. you know, I'm, I'm doing something with my life. Right. You know, I, yeah. I'm not, and, and no knocking anybody who is still there. I'm not saying they're not doing anything with their life, but mm. what I mean is being able to get out of, Right. Of, of where I was, changing my life, let's mm -hmm. say. I can't talk about where people are right now because it's it's a very personal race, everybody's mm -hmm. race, right? Absolutely. So um, I, think with, I think with that, and, you know, in, in, a, in rehab and everything, they tell you about your higher power. Mm -hmm. um, you know, am I religious? Yeah, I'd like to think I'm religious. Maybe I don't mm -hmm. go to church every, every Sunday or mm -hmm. every whenever it is, every week, every day. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I need to do that in order to be in tune with my higher power right you know um and and i'm and i'm getting there i'm, I'm in that space you know right. um have been in that space you know okay but um yeah i think it's 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 just that but oh, wow. yeah um you know just f for you to to go through that at such a young age and right now you you have a strong voice a strong voice for women and tourism in this country and when I say strong voice, I mean literally because you've been able to speak at a conference addressing over 40,000 delegates yes, yeah. at the T.D. Jakes, uh, Woman Thou Art Lose. Correct. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And now I'm just curious. What? How like, did that happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah what, I'm yeah. just so wondering. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. First of all, I want to hear the story of how that happened. Yeah. How do you get yourself uh, to speak on that level, on that global level? And I'm curious about your life mission now, because you seem to have a voice for women. Maybe you can speak on that right now. Mm. Yeah. Um, gosh, you know, I think it was, you, you know, um, T.D. Jakes, Jakes has a big presence here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, he's also got his medical foundation. He's got his, obviously, his ministry, yeah. um, different type of things. Right. So, again, through my Boro Bora mm -hmm. um, and my really good friend, Mickey, I smile. She's, she's just wonderful. Right. So, you know, being in that space mm -hmm. in, in, in California, anywhere mm -hmm. out, outside, I've got main people who, um, and it's really true, you yeah. know, when you do something well and you're good at your job, you'll get right. referred and you right. get a lot of referrals and it just keeps happening and yeah. happening. So, um, of course, you know, Mickey had spoken about experience in Kenya and has gone back and forth many times. Mm -hmm. So anybody in her circles or networks who's now like, okay, you know, we're coming to Kenya, we've tried this, but it really didn't work and we're at this roadblock. Yeah. Um, and this was even before, you know, I was, I was the president's niece. So it's not like, okay, people are now coming to me because of him and he was mm -hmm. president and able to open doors. This was even way before, as, as, as we've been saying, you know. So um, it, it was now basically just being able to to get people what they needed to get done here on the ground. That's right. what my company does, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
So again, and obviously again, I had to obviously even like kind of stop when I was in government because I mean, yeah. any conflict of interest, of course there was not, but you know, mm-hmm. we've had other people doing it before, but it was yeah. it, in my case, obviously not. So, um, so bishops, people had been coming out here mm-hmm. um, and getting to know them, getting to speak. And mm-hmm. when they started hearing about, you know, me drinking and recovering alcoholic, team five minutes. Yeah. Um, and as much as you talk about, you know, and I'm smiling, you know, <laughs> as much as I'm known for maybe being a Kenyatta or being a Gishaga, yeah. I'm probably most known for team five minutes. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that um, puts you out really, there. And that's really, really surprised me. <laughs> uh, but we'll come back to that because I know, um, well, well, maybe we'll talk about it, maybe we won't, but... Um, yeah. I won't lose track. It's one of the tools <laughs> of stick to the script. Yeah. Um, so with T.D. Jakes, it was that. So they were like, you know, Bishop is doing his last Women Thou Art Loose. Mm-hmm. And um, big announcements are going to be happening. And mm-hmm. it's going to be the biggest one ever, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and obviously, there's a bit of small had gone online with the with the pandemic. And it's mm-hmm. now back up and running. And, um, and they were like, we'd really love for you to be part of Girl Talk which is one of the panels on Women Thou Art Loose. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, and I don't, you know, for me, I'm sort of the person who kind of is like, you know, okay, I'll I'll say yes to something. And then when I kind of start thinking about it, I'm like, okay. Oh, why did I say that? Yeah, what what did I even, what did I even start doing? You know, even like with yourself, you know, reached out to you and was like this and thinking, okay, great. You're like, yeah, "Yeah, come on board. I'm thinking, okay, fine. This is great. You know, then I start like scrolling through and I'm seeing Safari Car, I'm seeing Cat Chalo, I'm seeing all these, I'm seeing all, and I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'm not on the right, <laughs> maybe maybe I've kind of sold myself too high, you know, right. that's me. But anyway, yeah. so with, with that, so I was thinking, okay, I was like, yes, you know, great. And when I'd tell people about it, they were like, stop, you're yeah. kidding. They were like, do you know how big that is? And I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm going to be, t- it's just me talking. Right. I get to talk and, and, and be on a platform where I can empower people. Right. Then someone's like, yeah, you know, it's like, 20,000 people, 30,000 people. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. No, it's not yeah. going to be, you know, then you start yeah. doing a bit of research and you're like, Ooh, Ooh this is okay. Big. Yeah. Um, it is, you know, then I'm like calling Liz my tail and I'm like, Liz, you know, I don't have any outfits, <laughs> you know, get yeah. me some, let's come on with some outfits. Mm. But um, yeah. So I think it was, it was. Wow. Speechless. It was a, yeah. um, so I had, and also before that, I'd gone to Bishop's birthday, mm. right? I'd been invited to his birthday party another, t- like six months before. Right. Um, so with that, and again, there, it's kind of like you're looking around and you're seeing people and you're just thinking like, oof, you know, yeah. I'm there with Mickey and, you know, my friend Mickey, who's, yeah. who's, who's, who's friends with, with them and everything and, and all of that. So, um, yeah, so by the time I got to Atlanta, mm-hmm. you know, you're getting there and you're, miss- you're meeting Bishop and also again, First Lady. Yeah. Um, and I actually didn't really realize how big it was because, of course, there was a major announcement happening. And that's mm. when he was actually handing the mantle over to Sarah, Oof. his daughter, Oof. you know, and she was now taking over with her um, uh, Evolve. Mm-hmm. So Women Thou Are Los was now ending, right. so to speak. Yeah. He's going to still be there. But now mm-hmm. Sarah was was taking, was it was transitioning to her mm-hmm. and, um, and her Evolve all right. platform. So when you start looking at all of that and you're just thinking, my gosh, you know, yeah. Wow, you know. Yeah. Um, so time came. Mm-hmm. Um, it's myself with three other women, mm-hmm. you know, um, head of Coca Cola. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's um, uh, Janice mm-hmm. uh, JBH, who again, you've only heard about her, but she was, you know, she was the first African American billionaire. Um, she's obviously a lot more now, but you yeah. can imagine with that. So, you know, you're yeah. sitting on the stage with these people and you're thinking, Oof. Uh, yeah. How did I get here? Kind of thing, and yeah. and you know, Bishop was just like, you know, don't he? It was actually him who said, "Don't ever ask that question again." He's like, "You are on this stage, even worthier than some of these people who are here." You know, he's like, "I don't really think you understand how your your life story." He's like, "You should even write a book." You know, so you know, been put in touch with somebody there to to write mm-hmm. a. a you know, one of his people who took, so we're in the middle yeah. of doing that now and right. talking about that to get right. a book out right. on me. Mm-hmm. Um, and lights come on, you're sitting there and you know, the lights come on and you look around and you're like, my gosh, you know, and mm-hmm. then again, you, you hear that it's, it's not even 20,000, it's 40,000. And I'm just like, I hate public speaking. I'm really scared. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. And just got on with it. And, um, 
when I was talking and telling my life story, the room was silent. People could just not believe, you know, mm -hmm. and then afterwards when you're now, you know, talking about it and it's in conversation and then panel and everything and the amount of people afterwards who mm -hmm. just were like, you know, the rest of the time in Atlanta, it was kind of like, I, I watched you, I, I saw you, my goodness, you know, well done. Like, I don't even mm. know where to begin. You know, wow. someone would come to me and be like, you're a single mother, mm -hmm. you know, and you having to, you know, juggle work and all of that and mummy guilt. I, I can resonate with that. Yeah. You know, someone else is coming to me and saying, you know, you coming from an affluent family, you know, and people treating you in a specific way or, mm. you know, or, or being shunned or doing whatever. I, I can relate to that, you mm -hmm. know. I'm a recovering addict, yeah. you know, you coming out and telling us about your story. I can relate to that. You know, um, you know, just anything I spoke about, somebody right. could could relate to that. Right. And it wasn't only women, it was men as well, because mm. I think it cuts across yeah. what, what I go through as a single parent. It's not a mum. It yeah. could be a, a, a it could be a dad as well. It could right. be, you know, an addict is not female. You know, right. anything that I have is not specific to women. Yeah. You know, and um, yeah. So Again, it was literally, and that's when I just, and that was when I was like, you know what, Nana? Because mm -hmm. I was actually stopped. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually told um, to get off. Yeah, that's why if you saw, if you look at um, my, I was really out there. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, even before the pandemic, I kind of went quiet. Yeah. Social media wise. Right. Um, I was actually told to get off social media. I was told that... Um, you know, uh, I, I um, without saying too much, mm -hmm. um, I'm making people look bad, right? I'm making, you know, there are people who are meant to be in that space of mm -hmm. tourism and I'm not allowing them to, to, shine. to shine. And I was like, it's not about shining because mm -hmm. I'm marketing Kenya. So right. if we're all getting there, we're all getting there. Right. So, um, yeah, I was told, you just stop. So... Team five minutes went went quiet, you know, and um, and I feel awful because um, and it wasn't a conflict of interest because of I'm working in government and this is it because I mean I'm not getting paid for team five minutes. It was literally mm. just motivating people. Yeah. And you know I I, I I want to first apologize to everybody out there because I did um, I went quiet without a reason, right? Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. But it was it was because of that, and um, and it was sitting there on that stage when and even afterwards. Mm -hmm. When people came up to me and were like, you've got to share your story. You've got yeah. to. And Team Five Minutes is also not about me sitting there in front of the everyday like, mm -hmm. ah, today in Nana's life, this is what happened. No, mm -hmm. it's 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 get, having those conversations. It's, right. it's empowering, motivating, right. you know, paying it forward. Mm -hmm. Today you may be having a great day, but somebody may not. So it's a reminder. Be conscious of your surroundings, you know. Um, it's that it's that piece of a puzzle, you know. Right. I keep saying, um, that's what I ended with also at at yeah. um, at TG Jakes is yeah. when I was, you know, when I was saying, we've all had a, we've all made puzzles, mm -hmm. right? Even even as a child, I hope everybody's, you know, had yeah. the experience of of doing that or watch their kids do it or interacted or seen it, mm -hmm. right? Um, and the most annoying thing is when you know you're going there putting your pieces together, mm -hmm. and you run out of pieces, but you've got empty. You've got yeah. missing pieces. Right. It is very annoying because mm -hmm. you're just like, I spent this time, I've spent yeah. this effort. And so that's why I keep saying everybody has a piece. Mm -hmm. We all have a piece in life. Okay. Um, and no piece is more important than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've got to really, really understand. Because if I don't show up today with my piece, mm -hmm. the picture is incomplete. Right. So if I'm a CEO, mm -hmm. and I don't show up with my piece, it is as important as somebody else who may be in a different position. And I don't want to say lower, because it's not mm -hmm. this thing of lower, better, higher. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's a joke. Let's not, we're past that now. Yeah. You know, so everybody has a piece of this, li this picture called life. Right. And if we don't show up every day with our piece, the picture is incomplete. Um, and and for me, that is, that is huge. And that is why, you know, I... I, that's the basis of Team 5 Minutes. It's, right. it's everybody showing up with their piece. Now, today my piece showing up is completing this picture yeah. with you, Yeah. Right? right? We've been able to complete that picture. Yes, yes. Tomorrow, your piece might be placed somewhere and complete somebody else's picture. Mm -hmm. My piece will will complete somebody, somebody else's. Somebody else's will complete. They're ever interchanging mm -hmm. because 
maybe in a week's time or somewhere else, we may show up somewhere together and we need to come and show our pieces and that picture is complete. You understand? So yeah. that's the importance of everybody's piece. Um, and, and it's just showing up, you know? So, yeah. I think <laughs> that is the best place to end this because you just summarized your entire life and that, that's powerful, you know, pieces of a puzzle. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Nana, I feel, you know, I, I, I saw your bio and I, I did a lot of research before you came on and I knew for a fact I need like five hours just, yes, no. <laughs> you know, to have this conversation <laughs> because there's so much to pull out and, and such heavy conversations. And what I'm hoping is I can get a chance to have you back here again <laughs> at other time and we can speak on a particular uh, topic because this was, it was very broad yes yeah it, it, and we can't beginning. cover everything yes in the time believe it or not we've been talking for more than an hour and a half okay gosh, and yeah. i feel like we've just scratched <laughs> the surface so thank you so much thank you so much for showing up i really really appreciate this i don't take it for granted classmates i hope today's class was um was impactful to you please uh, just get on the comments and just let us know what you pick from this conversation if there are more conversations you'd want us to have with Nana and, you know, follow her on her social media pages, especially Instagram, <laughs> Nana Geshaga and Facebook, Twitter. Are you on Facebook? Yeah, I'm on, I'm on Instagram. Yeah. I'm, God, where am I? <laughs> Nana when you could show, I know you'll put it. Yeah, I'm, on, yeah, we'll put I'm it. on Instagram, but by default, I do that thing where you connect onto Facebook. So right. yeah, that's yeah. cheating. LinkedIn, getting into that space. Absolutely. Twitter, no. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter scared me too much, so I, uh, yeah. yeah, but no. Yeah, and when is time, Team 5 Minutes making a comeback? April 1st. April 1st. Um, so it's not April Fool's, it's not an April Fool joke. All right. Um, but a lot of people like to launch things, I guess, on April 1st. I don't yeah. know, anyways, that's just whatever. Right. So. First of April, right. Team Five Minutes will be back. Right. Um, again, it's it's good to be back. Yeah. It's, um, it's, Welcome it's, back. We yeah. missed you. So thank you. All right. Thank We're you. still filming at Longer Not Place. Come check them out. Amazing space. And yeah, that's it for today's class. See you on the next class. Thank you so much. Thank you.